Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and it's time for another update on the 24 gallon Nano. Maybe the thing I love the most about reef tanks is they're their own little ecosystem. And that's the way I look at all of my tanks, including this 24 gallon Nano. I give it a water change once in a while, I add some food, and I added some light, and biology does the rest. Everything from the little bitty bacteria to the tang that's eating the algae off the rock and all of the coral. It's all working together to be a cohesive ecosystem. The problem is, is sometimes our ecosystems get out of balance and something takes over that we don't want. And Today, the update, the biggest part of the update on this tank is the dino flagellates. So if you remember back to the summer, I thought I had pretty well beat the dino flagellates in this tank by raising the temperature. I talked about the article on reef builders and I will link the whole update video that regards the temperature portion of battling dino flagellates down in the description below. So we don't have to recover all of that. But the short of it was by raising the temperature to about 82, 83 degrees, I saw a major drop in my dino flagellates. Towards the end of summer, I ended up having some air conditioner problems, so the tank went real hot, and then I ended up having my furnace problems. Yeah, it was a nightmare. But I had furnace problems, so the tank went real cold. Well, now everything's back to where it needs to be. Yes, you guys are right. We need to update heaters and all that kind of stuff, but that's not really what this video is about. So the tank has been stable in that 82 to 83 degree range for about two months now. The interesting part of it is I can't replicate the problems I was having with the dino flagellates. It's really interesting that now the dino flagellates are just growing out of control. The big difference is, is I'm not putting the Microbacter 7 in. So I've started dosing Microbacter 7 in this tank again. I also think I'm gonna start feeding the tank a little more. I've only got the one fish, so I don't need a lot of fish food. So maybe we'll add more coral food to the tank to help bring some of those nutrients up. Really, I feed this tank just enough to keep it going, and that's probably part of my problem. Now, if we think back to a couple of years ago, this tank had an algae issue. When I dosed the fluconazole, I got rid of the algae issue. But after that, I had dinoflagellates. Right, one, one thing left, the green hair algae, well, there was room for something else to take over. When we have open space in our tank, something wants to colonize it, whether it's bacteria or algae or coral or whatever. Free space is free real estate that something wants to have. The big problem with dinoflagellates is, is it's out competing corals. So it grows onto the corals and becomes a problem. So for today's video, the biggest portion of this is dino flagellate related and that's my direction forward on the dino but we've had some other interesting stuff happen with the coral so let's dive in and let's talk about the coral the first thing you're going to notice is i've taken the clownfish out of this tank here's some terrible cell phone footage to explain what happened and I'm trying to do service on my 24 gallon nano. And this stupid little clownfish keeps attacking me. I keep trying to clean the glass with a razor blade. And every time I do that, he tries to bite me. He's gotten me a couple times. It's not so much that it hurts, it's that I now can't clean my tank. I'm actually pretty worried about cutting myself. He keeps attacking me while I have a razor blade in my hand. And with these curved edges, I got to get a razor blade or something down here. So this stupid little clownfish is going to come 
out. Now this is easier said than done. I've been chasing them around the tankies. Broken off a bunch of my coral in the process. Oh, what a pain. And all I wanted to do was just a water change, get some of this detritus out of here, start fixing some of these messes. Clownfish, man, if they were the size of great whites, they would be the most feared fish in the ocean. I've probably been on this like an hour now, but I finally caught the fish. I had to pull the center rock, but he's out of here. So here he is. There's a lot of things we can do with him, but he can't go into a tank I work in all the time. Either this fish needs to go to somebody else, or he needs to be killed, or if you're like me, I've got a tank I don't use much. This is quite literally a tank for stuff I don't know what to do with. So fish, enjoy your life down there. It's about 80 gallons of water. I think it's actually gonna work out really good for you. Enjoy your life, buddy. Overall, the coral in this tank is doing really well, but it's an ecosystem. So certain things are doing better than others. For the most part, the zoas are doing really well. We've got a nice patch of utter chaos. We've got some fire and ice up top, but you can see my scrambled eggs are a little thin. And I think that's due to the dino. This stuff does not seem to be able to handle the dino very well. And that's kind of one thing I've noticed. These smaller polyp zoas just don't seem to handle that dino as well. They just can't compete as well with it. And then of course, there's my green pallies. I pulled some of these about three days ago when I did my water change, but I really just have to be super diligent about these. These want to take over. They're actually a pretty cool coral. They just grow out of control. So it's an ecosystem. I have to learn to work with them because I'm probably never gonna completely rid the tank of them. Next up is my Leptoceras. I've got the gold and the jack-o'-lantern and they're kind of growing together. And as you can see, this gold, it's out of surface area to grow so it's starting to plate. This isn't a normal growth pattern for Leptoceras, but it wants to live, it wants to thrive. So it doesn't have a rock to encrust, so it's growing over it. The jack-o'-lantern above it is maybe getting a little too much light on the tip. Leptoceras doesn't usually love a ton of light. And then that's where I've noticed just a little tiny bit of dino on it. And yes, that's the problem with dino. It just stresses the coral. Here we've got the sun-kissed bounds living right under the blue tubs. I would move the blue tubs because they're growing together and they're both really cool corals. But if I was to move those blue tubs, I would be blasting this bounce mushroom with a ton of light. So right now, it's almost a symbiotic relationship where the blue tubs are providing the shade that this mushroom needs to survive. I didn't really plan it that way, but that's how it's working at the moment. Above it is a pink chalice that came from Worldwide a couple of years ago. It's a really awesome chalice. You can see the feeder tentacles are out on it right now. I love this coral. It's been relatively slow growing. But honestly, this tank, it's small. I don't put that much food into it or anything. So this whole tank grows relatively slowly, which is okay because it's a small tank. This little fluffy thing here, it's a frag off of my big devil's hand. I love the way it's growing. It's starting to develop those fingers. Looks awesome. Behind the devil's hand is my blushing leather. I am in love with this coral. It's been super hardy, super healthy, and the color is really nice for leather. I love this and highly recommend it. It's from Indonesia. So glad Indo's back. Now let's talk about Mount Dino. I call it that because it's covered in dino flagellates. I did a water change in this tank about two days ago. And you can see, still tons of dino. But this is that long tentacle stuff that's in my big tank. It's just a little frag off of it, and it's awesome. 
Behind it is some purple Leptoceras. I love Leptoceras. It's maybe the most underrated coral in the hobby, in my opinion. Behind it is some of that big green toadstool that I have. That's a really cool coral, and I love it. And then next to it is my neon kryptonite candy cane. And you can see it's growing a little bit of dino on it as well, which is stressing this coral. But what really stressed this coral is the giant heliofungia above it. This helio is awesome. But this used to be a much larger colony. Then one day, the big helio threw the sweepers out, and that was that. It annihilated about half of that colony. So this is what I fragged off and saved the rest. The big colony is downstairs in the frag tank recovering. Now the Helio has been doing incredibly well here. I have it mounted on a rock. I got it as a little baby. These are normally found in the sand bed, normally under lower light. In this high light, low nutrient environment, don't ask me why, it is absolutely thriving. It looks like a torch, but it's a Heliofungia. I love this coral. In front of the Helio is my Hollywood Stunner Chalice, and it just has that full chalice look. I love the look of it. It's not causing me any aggression issues where it's at. It's living with the Helio for now, so if I don't have to frag it, I'm not going to. In the very back is my purple and green Fiji Fabia. I love this coral because I've had it for years. It's from Fiji and they just aren't bringing more into the country. In the very back, I've added a green Cinularia. This is a really nice one from Australia. Uh, it's just a frag off of my big colony, but I put it back there because my acro died. Don't worry, I got more in the big tank. And then next to it is some Seriatopora or bird's nest. This is that really fluffy stuff. Under low, lower light, it's more of a green teal color, but here it's almost purpley pink with green tips under that super bright light. I love it. And then below it is my Satosa. This Satosa used to be much bigger, but when I was being attacked by a clownfish, it broke a bunch of pieces off. And then the big money next to it's that grafting stuff. So this is a grafted piece that I got to Worldwide. The problem I'm running into with the grafted is that the red grows so much faster than the green. Now I've got a little tiny bit of green left in the big tank, but most of it's just red. All right, now we're looking at a section of the tank that I almost never film, and that's because it's in the back. I'm like standing back here, leaned over a jukebox, shooting through the railing so you guys can see this. There's no good way to do it. But this mushroom is a really cool. It was a little tiny guy. Um, I put him back here and he's just grown and thrived. He's been there for a couple of years. He does really well. If you guys know exactly what he is, let me know. But he's green with like these yellow little bumps all over him. He's getting huge. I love him. And behind him is some green Cephastria. This stuff is growing in much higher light than I would normally ever grow Cephastria in, and it almost always has this bleached out look. I would say it's unhealthy, but it just keeps slowly growing and expanding. The stuff that's in a more shady area is more colorful. I wish I could get you guys better shots so you can really see what it looks like because it's just so interesting in the way it's growing and the colors it's taking on in the different lighting, all within one little colony. And there's the update on the 24 gallon Nano. This tank is far from perfect, but honestly, I don't put a lot of time and effort into it. I do a weekly water change, I feed the fish, I feed the coral once in a while, I take care of some pests, not as often as I should, and that's about it. I don't do much to this tank, and it continues to thrive. Me personally, I love an old, grown-in tank. I treat my tanks like an ecosystem. Many people with this dinoflagellates problem would tear it down. Me, I wanna fix the ecosystem. I wanna work with it. I wanna make it happen. So that's the goal going forwards. So thanks for watching. 
this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.